On this week's episode, find out the special event put on by OSU Piano International. Where Avicii has been playing lately. And what the Whiteside Theater has in store for you on Valentine's Day. Only on Bombshell, Bombshell Music, Music News. Hey there all you music fans, welcome to this term's first episode of Bombshell Music News on the one and only KBVR. I'm Courtney Cassette. And I'm Camille Field, and we're your Bombshell hosts, here to give you the latest scoop on bands, artists, events, and all things music in Oregon and the Pacific Northwest area. Our field reporter, Noe Martinez, got the chance to check out one of the members of our local music scene right here on the OSU campus. Who could he have possibly found? What's up guys, I'm Noe Martinez and I'm inside the music building. Uh, we're here to interview Kevin Patton, who was a musician and also happens to be a professor here at OSU. Let's check it out! You mind introducing yourself? Sure. My name is Kevin Patton. I'm an assistant professor of music and performance technologies here at Oregon State. Just got here uh, this semester, and I teach classes on how to use technology uh, with your music uh, in, in real time, creating new configurations of sound on the fly. That's awesome. So tell me about your music. Well, I would uh, describe my music as um, is part rock and roll, uh, part improvisation or jazz music, but all mediated through the use of custom technologies. And what that means is that I build uh, computer programs and hardware devices to play my music with. So, um, and these are uh, dynamic and reconfigurable in the moment and allow me to access a whole different worlds of sounds um, each time I play. So, you say that's the style of music you have. Uh, what inspires that style of music? Sure. Well, you know, I, I came up as a, as, a, as a youngster playing a lot of rock and roll bands, and I really loved the energy and the visceralness of, uh, that, that you got when you played rock and roll really loud. And then as I uh, became more interested in music, I started shifting my focus to jazz. And I really loved the, the spontaneity and the creativity that jazz music um, that allowed you to have. And so as I thought of different ways to combine these with a vocabulary that would reflect you know, my 20th century, or 21st century, excuse me, um, perspective, you know, combining it with modular technologies uh, seemed to make a lot of sense. That's cool. <laughs> What type of uh, musicians inspire you to create the music that you create? Well, I really come from uh, from uh, the electroacoustic music tradition when you put it all together, and uh, there are a couple musicians in that tradition that were uh, at, at, you know outstandingly inspiring. Um, <clears throat> one from the early days of kind of handmade uh, electron electronic musical. Uh, instruments or just controllers is, um, is a Dutch man by the name of Michel Weisvies and he uh, helped found an institute called Stein which is uh, the, the uh, studio for electro instrumental music in Amsterdam and as a part of the work that they did there they began creating new devices and new uh, new kind of ergonomic controllers that allowed you to control sound uh, in real time a new approach to instrumental performance and design that allowed you to use your body and your motion to control parts of sound making. So tell us about your projects. Well, I'm uh, active in a lot of different uh, a lot of different projects. One that uh, I performed here uh, just a couple of weeks ago is called the Tarex, and this is a sensor-enabled uh, electric guitar. So it's a regular electric guitar, but um, through sensor and gestural sensing uh, technology, you're able to actually control effects and synthesizers uh, by the motion of your body or by the way you're moving the guitar. Um, another guitar-based project I have is one called Mind Splitter. Um, which is really endurance metal. Mm -hmm. So I basically stand up on a stage by myself, um, very, very loud volume, and try to shred as fast as I can for as long as I can. I like to think I can make about 45 minutes or an hour, but it's incredibly exhausting, so it usually winds up to be about, you know, 30, 35 minutes. Um, um, another project I have is sometimes I build uh, electronic environments for other musicians to play through. And uh, some of my last releases have, uh, have really featured this approach. Um, and so what this does is it 
does a real-time analysis of uh, the of what the musician is playing, and then creates an environment uh, around what they do. So, tell us about your work here at OSU. Um, yeah, happily. So, I'm a new professor here this semester, um, and I was brought in as part of a provost hire, and uh, my charge is to develop a curriculum of performing arts technologies. And uh, through this curriculum, kind of uh, bridge the different practices of music, uh, theater arts, um, uh, fine art, uh, and new media um, into this new proposed school of arts uh, and communication. And ideally, what this, what this uh, curriculum will, will do is um, kind of use contemporary technologies and leverage them in order to uh, provide an expressive or creative outlet uh, for people that, uh, that, that are creative thinkers and are based in arts and performance. Um, and conversely, for engineers, um, or the more technically minded who might uh, be interested in uh, learning more or taking some of these courses, um, what we're trying to do in that particular case is to take a normally deterministic model and put it into a different context, context of, uh, in context of fine arts or performance, and in this way, uh, force technical thinking a little bit out of its box. Um, and, um, to my way of thinking, this is a this is a true interdisciplinary approach, and um, in my opinion, is uh, one of the keys to fostering uh, innovative thinking and creating a culture of innovation here at OSU. So, how can students get involved with all this? Well, recently there is um, just started a uh, computer art society and uh, computer aided art society to be specific, and, and this society hopes to gather students who are interested in looking at um, algorithmic methods of generating sound and image and um, presenting those in, in different kinds of creative forms. Um, if you are interested in joining this club that still needs officers, you may contact me, which is um, at my email here at OSU. And, and, um, and apart from that, you know, just if you're interested in any of the things that you heard or you, uh, that I've discussed here, um, please feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to begin a conversation with anyone who's interested. So if you want to contact him, here is the whole information. If you guys want to, it's an interesting club, guys. Uh, to finish off this interview, can you give a shout out to Bombshell Music News? Bombshell Music News, KBVR, catch it. This is Noel Martinez reporting for Bombshell Music News. Thanks, Noe. Now let's get back to some more music news. OSU Piano International presented a special Steinway event which featured a lecture and concert by British pianist Paul Roberts this past Wednesday, February 1st. Roberts' multiple careers take him around the world, but especially to the United States where he is in great demand for his lecture recitals and master classes. He is a specialist in French Impressionism, and is known for his sensitive recordings of Debussy's music, as well as for his highly acclaimed book on Debussy's piano music and its relation to visual art and literature. Roberts is a recurrent favorite at the Portland International Piano Festival, where he enthralls audiences with his fascinating lectures and his evocative playing. Robert teaches at the Guildhall School of Music and Drama in London, where he is an honorary fellow, and at the Royal Northern College of Music in Manchester. Corvallis OSU Piano International is a volunteer organization that sponsors a series of recitals, concerts, and other activities involving piano. The event took place at the LaSalle Stewart Center at 7.30 p.m. Dubstep powerhouse artist Avicii hit the Pacific Northwest this past week, making his Seattle debut on January 25th. The show, which was the latest stop on his current House for Hunger tour, took place at the stunning Paramount Theater. The tour's goal is to raise $1 million to help put an end to hunger in the United States, while also creating pulsing, rave-like performances for sold-out crowds. I have yet to talk to one person in attendance that was disappointed. Dion Cox of Whitworth University exclaims, It was the most epic night of my life. The energy was crazy. I would go every night if I could. Obviously, the young Swedish star knows a thing or two about showing people a good time with his undeniably catchy beats. 
Avicii is more of an experience than a standard concert. It is a spectacle. You go to his show to see other people, not watch a man spinning turntables. The music draws out emotion in people, which formulates interactions and, well, perfect dance music, said Oregon State junior Jake Reuter. He goes on to admit that while he does not believe that Avicii is the greatest artist in electronic music today, the reason he is so popular is because of the loud, colorful show he puts on. Well, we'll have to take a short break, but when we come back, I'll tell you all about Avicii's performance and why it rocked. Avicii rocked Seattle this past weekend with a sold-out show, which began at 8 p.m. with opener Johnny Monsoon getting the crowd warmed up for the all-out dancing pandemonium that Avicii created. The first hour of Avicii's performance consisted of all of his original and most popular songs, including Seek Bromance and international hit Levels. The second half was full of remixes and mashups of other artists' songs. According to Oregon State student Carter Mitchell, for the encore he played the Skrillex remix of his most famous song Levels and then finished the night with Jump Around the 90s throwback from House of Pain and which got the crowd going crazy. Overall, it can be concluded that Avicii is a pure performer by focusing more on creating an otherworldly atmosphere filled with good times, more so than the actual musical compositions. Jake Reuter agrees, claiming it's the type of show that makes you still smile in remembrance weeks later when you hear Levels playing from car stereos or out of someone's window on a Friday night. And to be honest, I think that smile is all he really cares about. Look for Avicii next in Europe and beyond as he continues his world tour abroad. Looking for something romantic and original to do for you and your special sweetheart on Valentine's Day? Well, look no further because the Sat in Love Orchestra will be performing at Corvallis's own Whiteside Theater on Saturday, February 11th from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m with doors opening at 7 p.m. This event is bringing entertainment for all ages, from babies to 80s. All can enjoy this first time ever appearance of Sat in Love Orchestra in the historic Whiteside Theater. All proceeds will go toward the current lighting of Marquee Project to rehabilitate the circa 1950 neon sign. Tickets are $16 in advance and for Whiteside Theater members, $20 the day of the show and kids 10 and under will get in for free. This venue is located at 361 Southwest Madison Avenue, Corvallis, Oregon, so go check it out. Don't move. We have to take a break, but we'll be right back to give you the scoop on more music happenings. See, that didn't take long, did it? Now let's hear from another one of our bombshell field reporters, Sierra Lever. Take it away, Sierra. We got to check out a band hailing from Portland with a style of melodic rock anthems driven by classically inspired piano. Let's go check it out. Hey Corvallis, I'm Sierra Lever with Bombshell Music News. I'm here with Rags and Ribbons. They have a show at Bombs Away Cafe in Corvallis. How excited are you for that? Very excited. Uh, we've played there once before and uh, it was an awesome crowd. Uh, we love Corvallis coming down and playing here. Um, it's a really cool venue. Uh, yeah, we're definitely so excited. And you're on tour right now. You guys were in Eugene yesterday? Yeah. Okay, now, what other places are you guys touring? Um, this, this is like a short little Northwest tour, kind of to, we just got our van and our trailer, and um, it's our first tour, and so we went to Seattle, and then we went to Boise, then Eugene, now for Dallas. Um, and then we're going to be back home for a month, getting ready to go uh, all the way up to Texas and South by Southwest. So I also heard that you had sold out the Dead for Portland yeah. for an album release party. Yeah. How did that go? Yeah, we, when the album came out last Tuesday, um, we kind of had all this stuff lined up and our big release show was in Portland that same week on Friday. So for us, it was, it was very much a mountaintop experience. We, it was a Friday night at one of the, the greatest venues in Portland at the Doug Fir. Yeah, there's sort of this moment where we open the set and we kind of are all more huddled together. And then did this intro song and then we kind of opened the first song. And when I first turned around in the audience, I was just like, like I hadn't really looked up yet. I was like, oh. Yeah, 
yeah, so uh, we just released a new album last week. It's called The Glass Masses. Um, and yeah, we've been working on this album for a while now, over a year. Um, our sound is a little, uh, I guess, theatrical or dramatic. I learned about music composition in college, and uh, I really have a lot of influences like based in classical music and you know, more, uh, a lot of opera, actually, too. And I just really love how dynamic that music is and uh, captivating. And so I think that kind of shows to our music. I think for all of us, it's definitely, you know, we didn't all come from one scene of music. So we pull from some of John's classical influence and Chris's more hard rock influence. And I feel like myself, it's kind of a, a mixture of all of that as well. I think there is that, especially from John's influence, that kind of higher composition influence um, for rock music or pop music that you can kind of pick up on and so um, it's just a little different and, but it's very much collaborative in terms of filling out and, and fleshing out the song together. When I joined bands it was always like kind of more hard rock and so um, when I joined these guys I was kind of playing brush sticks at first and it was very kind of more low key, um, more more about the piano and not that it isn't now but then we slowly started to kind of like ramp it up and turn into like a rock band. Now with future plans what things do you guys plan to do? Yeah I think this this year is sort of a big year for us in the sense that last week was our first real album that we put out and even though we've been playing music together for two or three years I really feel like this last week is sort of the start of this current uh, band and the, the form that we we're in now. And so we really want to tour and, and help promote that record as much as possible. So we'll be going down to South by Southwest in March for that festival. And then we've been working with our friend Lucy um, to put out as much video content as possible. So we put out our first music video a couple weeks ago and we have plans to do a couple more this year just because these videos are, are quite important in the modern music world. For all the fans out there and your future fans, how can they check out your music? Um, the best way is probably um, Facebook and our albums distributed through like iTunes and Amazon and most of the digital retailers. Um, and like YouTube, Tumblr, Twitter, all those things as well. My name's John, I play keys and I sing. My name's Chris and I play drums. My name's Ben, I sing and I play the guitar. And we are Rags and Ribbons and you're watching Bombshell, Bombshell Music, Music News. News. Awesome job, Sierra. And now for those of you that want to make some weekend plans, look no further for ideas. Here with us is Patrick Mick, who has compiled a list of everything you don't want to miss this weekend. Not sure of what to do this weekend with your friends or significant other? Well, I'm Patrick Mick, and I'm our resident good time finder, here to tell you all what is going on these days in Corvallis. Friday, tonight, at 8 p.m., the Beanery will be showcasing Lavina Ross. Or, for $5, you can see Ambush Party and the Radiographers at Bombs Away Cafe at 9. If either of these aren't your preferred genre, Fireworks will be having the Coin of the Realm Orchestra at 8. Or, if you want to keep it extremely local, you don't even need to leave campus to see All You Need Is Love by the Eugene Ballet Company at the Austin Auditorium. Student tickets for this event are only $10. If tonight's events just aren't going to be enough and you must have more music, then Saturday night, Pete Kozak will be performing at the Beanery starting at 8 p.m. As the weekend winds down, if you're not too busy studying on Sunday and want to play music yourself, Harrison's Bar and Grill will be having an open jam from 9 to 11 p.m. Hope you get a chance to get out and enjoy some of these events. Well, that's all the music news we have for you this week, Corvallis. But be sure to tune in next time for all new interviews, stories, and of course, to see us. See you next week.